Good day and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I'm your host, the Voice of Reason, and this is a world brief. So, uh, just the world brief today. Uh, there is ongoing strife in the country of Myanmar. Uh, as we know, there was a uh, coup d'etat. The, uh, the military uh, deemed that the elections uh, inside of the country uh, were fraudulent and uh, has uh, suspended the, uh, the, win the winning uh, side, so to speak, and uh, has uh, taken power for the next year. And because of that, there is ongoing uh, general strikes and uh, civil unrest uh, located in the country. And there are international calls for uh, the, uh, civ the uh, civilian government to be uh, reinstalled. And uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, the, uh, the military of Myanmar, uh, formerly known as uh, Burma, uh, is a very deep institution. Uh, it has been uh, a major uh, source of uh, stability and a, uh, a major source of, of, of pain as well for that nation. But uh, the military-industrial complex, the, the, the roots of, of the uh, Myanmar military run deep inside of that society. And the military has a lot of power, uh, specifically the army. Uh, the army is rather large for a country of uh, uh, just about 60 million people. Uh, the army consists of about 375,000 men. It does have a small air force and a, a small navy of about 15,000 personnel each, and then obviously some, some uh, naval uh, warships. And, uh, and and aircraft as well, but uh, the the power is mainly uh, inside of the army and the uh, paramilitary police forces as as well, which number upwards to a hundred thousand. The uh, one of the unique things uh, that the government of Myanmar has done, or rather the military, they uh, instead of consolidating a lot of their their institutions of government inside of major cities such as Mandalay or Yangon. Uh, if you if you look here on my map, you will see where uh, government exists, and it's not in one of those major cities, but a rather insignificant area. And uh, it's not as easy for the population to get to to possibly take over or demonstrate. And you can see uh, all the ministries, the Ministry of Border Affairs and the Ministry of, uh, of Defense, I think, is further up here towards the north. But uh, you, can, you can clearly see a lot of these, uh, these government institutions, are, or all of the government institutions, the headquarters, are located outside of, of major cities. And that was done with intent to protect these areas in case of uh, mass uh, demonstrations where they would not be uh, affected as much. And here is the, uh, the government house, the presidential palace. But obviously the power um, has really always resided with the military in Myanmar and um, I, I do not see it relinquishing control until it believes that a, uh, a government to its uh, to its liking uh, is uh, is installed and uh, the uh, the military does have significant support but uh, as does the uh, the elected government as well so we'll we'll see what happens there I anticipate it's going to get worse before it gets better, and the military will not step down. Uh, other areas, uh, looks like uh, a uh, Russian judge uh, has uh, ruled against 
Navani, and it looks like uh, Mr. Navani will be heading to a penal colony for two years. And then along with the uh, Sudan-Ethiopian uh, uh, conflict, uh, Sudan and Ethiopia continue to trade barbs. They continue to trade uh, dislikes towards uh, the uh, the outlook of what's happening on their shared border between uh, Ethiopia and Sudan. The United States, in regards to Saudi Arabia, is... Uh, not, uh, or in terms of Joe Biden, the recently elected president of the United States, um, has not yet had a communication with the leader of Saudi Arabia, the crown prince. And uh, apparently uh, Joe Biden will only speak to the actual king of Saudi Arabia. And uh, there is also the outlook that uh, the United States will not be uh, giving weapons in the same manner uh, that that uh, Saudi Arabia is used to receiving uh, weapons, especially uh, the weapons that it was needing inside of Yemen to prosecute that war. So we'll keep an eye on that, and especially you know where is Saudi Arabia going? to go to uh, fulfill its uh, defense needs. I don't suspect that it will gravitate too far from uh, the United States as, uh, as those, those roots run very deep and go back to the, uh, the actual founding of the uh, Saudi Kingdom. But we'll keep an eye on it.